Welcome on in the fastest 30 minutes in all of sports. It's your boy G Bush right back with you, rocking with you on the Ultimate Brown Show. Make sure you check us out. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you subscribe so you know when all of our great shows are coming up. We've got a great show for you as well. Fire and flying solo today, but we bring back fan mail hotline responses. Got two calls is ready for you guys. We'll be able to get to those as well. Uh, make sure you uh, check us out. We'll get the fan mail hotline responses ready to go. We got two callers. So uh, if you want to be part of the fan mail, if you want to get part of the fan mail and be part of what we do, send your questions or comments by calling the Ultimate Browns hotline below and leave a voicemail. Ultimate Browns hotline, of course, is 216-345-4433. Once again, 216-345-4433. If you do really want to get in contact with the show, make sure you leave your name, where you're calling from, and your take. We usually throw out a a take uh, for you guys to kind of, you know, follow along with today. So uh, today's take, we talk about this first uh, question we have on the uh, on the docket here. Building block. What is a bigger, better pillar to build around? Coach Stefanski or Deshaun Watson? I can't take credit for this question because it came from Earl Pearl, but I, I, I was just I was enamored with why this was even a question. You'll you'll get my my thoughts on it here coming up as well. We got a clip uh, from uh, Deshaun Watson. Uh, you know, make sure you go check out his podcast. Um, with Quincy, Quincy Avery um, and, you know, uh, QB Unplugged. Shout out to them. I like that, what they're doing over there. He gets his ideas and thoughts out, and I really like that. So make sure you check that out. But he's talking about the Dome. Deshaun Watson has actually come out and said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to – I want to be – I want to be – I want to Dome. So we're going to get to that as well. And, of course, your questions, your thoughts, your comments, the best we do here, right here on Ultimate Browns. Let's start off with what the thumbnail talks about. You know how we give it up over here. Uh, You'll see this episode come out tomorrow. This episode, shout out to Earl DePearl. Uh, He was, uh, you know, uh, you know, producing uh, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show today. On the television side, one of the questions that we had um, that is going to be out and available if you did not catch it live on WKYC was, hey, what do you think is more prevalent? Should the Browns, would you rather build around the coach and Kevin Stefanski or would you rather build around Deshaun Watson? Now, for me, I thought this question was uh, kind of far out. Like to me, like it should be clear. Kevin Stefanski is a good coach. I like Kevin Stefanski, like what he's done. Um, I, I think that he's uh, he he's he's gotten better at what he does as he's gone gone along with it for the Cleveland Browns, but I mean at this point, we we got it we got it we got to break this down. Uh, there isn't that many coaches that I would say is even in the realm of possibility of saying you can build around as a coach. Let's be clear. I like coaches and coaches do make a difference at the highest level when all things being equal and a coach can call a play that can get you a, a touchdown. A coach can call you a play or, or, or dial up a blitz or, or make a, a, a play or have a scheme ready for a team. And there's two to three plays a game that you can, you know, attribute to your coach that will say, all right, I like this coach and this is what he's going to do to help me get over the hump. But one of the things that I don't, I really like aspire to is saying that it's the coach and, and he's the most important. Let's be clear without, uh, w- without Patrick Mahomes, uh, Andy Reid ain't, ain't talking about nothing. Like let's be, you know, he, he had, you know, Donovan McNabb and he had Alex Smith and those are good players. And, and Donovan McNabb was it probably, if there was a hall of very good Donovan McNabb would be in that hall forced, I think four straight a- NFC championships. Right. But uh, you got to have ball players. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is, 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 is the top notch over there. Patrick Mahomes can play a different number of ways, and he's the best in the game. So when you got that player, of course you're going to be able to be elevated. Of course you're going to be able to do that. When it comes to Coach Stefanski and, and, and Deshaun Watson, and this is the way I answered the question on the show, you tell me if today – Something came out and said, Coach Stefanski will not be able to coach a whole year. You'd have to, you know, you know, analyze that. But you got three or four different coaches that could step up. You got Vrabel that probably could play, step up and be a coach. You got Schwartz that could probably step up and be a coach. Heck, Bubba Ventrone could probably step up and be a head coach and not miss a step in what they're trying to do. But if you say Deshaun Watson is done for the year, 
everything, you might as well close your tent up because the whole experiment is over. See how that works? I, listen, I've seen Mike Prefer get a, a, a playoff W over here before. And I'm not saying that Coach Stefanski is not a, a person that is is, is extremely um, vital to the organization. Uh, you know, the, the ownership has come out and said that they're, what they're going to do, they're going to they're gonna make sure that uh, Andrew Barry and Coach Stefanski get that, uh, that extension. They're working on it. They're close to it. But come on, man. I think sometimes, man, we're getting confused out here. Like, we really be getting confused. Sometimes we be doing these shows and we don't even be in, in, the, in the right stratosphere. Who says, whoever says they're picking around a head coach? I didn't see Bill Belichick get old in front of my eyes. I didn't see coaches just, just, listen, Sean Payton's of the world. Just be like, uh. <laughs> a lot of times cats be living on, cats be living on, uh, on a prayer cats be living on, on old school stuff and old school name recognition and here's the crazy thing let me switch this up really quickly because i think i think kevin stefanski himself gets a little bit, bit of a bad rap because i don't know i don't think people understand where they want to put him at uh this is a something that um this is something that we had let me throw this in here um this is something from i believe it's called pro football network and the thing with uh, Stefanski is we either over evaluate him or we over inflate what he is, or we just disrespect him. There is no, there, there isn't no, you know, middle ground here. It's either Kevin Stefanski gets disrespected and he gets put on these types of lists where he's not in the top 10, or we just give him all the credit in the world. And we say, we don't need a quarterback. I think there's somewhere in between. I know I'm an, a, a, a guy that usually gives some sort of definitive takes, but I think Kevin Stefanski is in the middle. Um, this tweet came out and it's from Pro Football Network. The 10 best NFL coaches heading into next year. Now, this 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 whole uh, exercise is hot garbage. This is what I call the Cleveland Browns offseason hate. This is uh this is a mixture of people saying that the Cleveland Browns, they don't like their uniforms. They don't like their quarterback and they're not a sexy team to talk about. So let's talk about that. Uh, in this tweet, the top 10 head coaches going into next year. Now, Max says, Jim Harbaugh hasn't won an NFL game in literally a decade. Sean Payton went 8-9 and nine last year and had a bottom five offense, yet they are ranked ahead of the two-time NFL coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski, a guy that started five different QBs but still made the playoffs. Make it make sense. Hashtag dog pound, hashtag brown. Hey, listen, shout out to you, Matt. I appreciate you, uh, you know, checking in with us. But you're right. Yeah, how, make it make sense to me. They have Andy Reid. I'm okay with that. Sean McVay, I'm cool with that. These are Super Bowl guys. Kyle Shanahan, I'm cool with that. Harbaugh, cool. Mike Tomlin, he, you know, look, look, all these dudes in here have either been to the Super Bowl or won a Super Bowl. Can't knock you, right? Jim Harbaugh has been to a Super Bowl messing around uh, back a, a you know, decade ago with Colin Kaepernick. But, but under no circumstances is Jim Harbaugh won no games coming up in these last few years. Jim Harbaugh, get up off the licks. Matt LaFleur, I like your name. I think you did some nice things with Jordan Love. You made the playoffs. Stop it. Sean Payton ain't even in the top 10 Nice human beings in the league. This dude is a jerk. This dude, he's lost his fastball. This dude is not, people don't even really respect him like that. And you got him up here with an with a, with a, with a, with a under 500 record and a terrible offense? Come on now. I like Dan Campbell. I like Mike McDaniel. But come on, Mike McDaniel's not won anything. Come on now. So there's at least... Jim Harbaugh, Matt LaFleur, Sean Payton, Mike McDaniel, you can't be on this list above, uh, of, of uh, uh, you know, of uh, 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 your man, Stefanski. And his beard looked better than yours. Stop playing around. 74 people here. Hit, hit that like button. Let's get to the, see some of these comments, too. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yes, indeed. Let me put this back up here. Uh, let's get to some of these comments you guys got. Man. <laughs> Hey, you know what it is. Hey, G, another uh, G, ready for the another speedy, fast show. Need to make this show sixty minutes, please, man. Fire! I see you out there. Ah, uh, we still got some Texans fans in here. Uh, Y'all can come on and hang out. J Dog sixty six. Kevin is a fine, uh, fine coach. 
Uh, Stefanski cooked up some thick or winning soup with Flacco. Time to cook with the Watson. It is, it is you know what we're talking about. Uh, Kevin will be extended. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we need to keep our stability going. I am uh, happy we don't have a revolving door like the history here in Cleveland. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I really think is, you know, I'm not, this is no knock against Stefanski, but to me, players play. You know, I I I can't go as far as as people say I'm gonna start my organization with them because I know a lot of great coaches that don't look that great. Shout out to Eric B. Enemy, but I told you not to go to go to the Washington Commanders. Told you that was not what it was supposed to be looking like. And now you are back in college. I said, don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Make them come to you. I'd have been right in Kansas City until they got ready to, 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 to give me a job somewhere where I could, I could be a head coach. But, you know, that's it. If people want to go prove they prove themselves. It happens like that sometimes. Definitely happens sometimes. When we come back, let's get back to this. Watson, he's, he's opining. Deshaun Watson is a little more opinionated. Matter of fact, I like this little podcast. I like what he's doing over there. So about time he get out and, and get his get his story, his personality out there, and it's the best way to do it. Shout out to uh, them over the uh, QB Unplugged podcast. We got a little sound from them. He's opining on what's going on in Cleveland. If you not know and you you hiding under a rock, they trying to figure out what are they doing in Cleveland or Brook Park. And I think the Browns is excited to go to Brook Park. Brook Park. We'll get Deshaun Watson's thoughts on that coming up here in just one moment. You're listening to G Bush on the, on the Ultimate Browns Show. Uh, let me tell you about my guys over there all across the UCSS network. We got the network jumping in this baseball season. Guardians got a big time win yesterday, eight to nothing over the Oakland Athletics. And you got to be watching. If you're a baseball guy, you're watching uh, Zach Meisel and uh, Adam the Bull on Ultimate Guardians. Make sure you check those guys out. It'll be predominantly every single Monday. Uh, they'll be getting you ready to go for the season uh, and, and getting you all things Guardian Best Podcast and baseball in the city. Make sure you check that out as well. And don't forget, Monday, we give you something. How about Tuesday? We give you something, too. Every Tuesday, we got the Ultimate Cavaliers, uh, Jason Lloyd, Mikey McNuggets, all things Cavs. Cavs getting geared up, ready to get ready for, for the uh, the uh, playoffs here. Fall to the fourth seed, but the Cavs are getting Donovan Mitchell coming back from a nasal fracture. He should be in the lineup probably tonight. Check that out. But every Tuesday, Jason Lloyd, Mikey McNuggets get you going for Ultimate Cavaliers. And then guess what? It's the only place you can find this is on the UCSS Network. Ah, uh, we back at it. Um, make sure you hit 90 people, right? Listen, five. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button so you know when we're coming on. And you know how we give it up in the Browns. You know, I like everybody else here, but we give you ultimate Browns twice a week, Monday and Friday. You know how we give it up because it's that important. We got to. So let's get uh, let's get to some sound uh, as we teased earlier. Deshaun Watson uh, and shout out to the uh, QB Unplugged. Tim and Quincy Avery do a good job over there. They always give you some plays to break down. They give you opinion. They give you some facts, some different things. And I think it's important uh, that Deshaun gets his his voice out there and continues to to build and let people know who he is as a person and give his own narrative out there. This time he's giving his opinion on what they think about the Dome versus the open-air stadium. Uh, and this is Deshaun Watson talking with Chrissy Avery, uh, courtesy of the Q QB Unplugged. With the Hazums, you know, I haven't talked to them personally about the, the stadium, but I think in their eyes, they're looking at it like, look, this is the opportunity for us to be able to grow Cleveland, have more events in the offseason, host the Super Bowl, uh, concert, uh, WWE matches, Boxing matches, like all types of stuff that can actually have that possibility when you create that new stadium dome. But then you see on the other side where, you know, the fans, they like the lake effect. They like the win. But as players, like, we you know, actually, dome, like, I'm pretty you, sure. You're a quarterback, <laughs> right? you somebody who has to yeah. throw in these elements. You know what I'm saying? You have to actually go through the effects of throwing in a dome versus throwing outside. And I think that it's difficult for Cleveland quarterbacks to be to put up the statistical success, right? Because you play all right. those home games and you get like a crazy win game or super rainy or it's cold and people have a hard time catching the Like there's all these different things and elements. Like what is your thought process on what would you rather do, be in the dome or be outside? Like is there any advantage to you in terms of being outside? 
Uh, I mean, it's definitely an advantage. Like, if anybody can sit here and say that it's not an advantage, uh, for, especially for quarterbacks to play inside in a war, then you, 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 you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, dry ball and being able to throw the ball without no wind or no lightning or rain, nothing that's definitely key. But, um, so I, I would say if I had to pick, of course I'm going to go to the Dome and a new facility and, Oh, he sound like me. If I had to pick, of course, I'm going to go with the dome and the facility. Uh, shout out to the uh, nice courtesy of the QB Unplugged podcast. Make sure you guys check that out. Subscribe to the channel um, and, uh, you know, support over there. Uh, you know, I thought uh, I, I think he, he holds the same type of um, I would say probably, you know, the thought process, you know, in, in some of the things that we see is when we talk about it, not just being a facility. You know what I'm saying? I've always looked at it as, as, a, as, as a chance to bring the culture along a little bit further. One of the things that I've always watched is other teams take advantage of, of new facilities, take advantage of new new uh, infrastructure so that they can, um, you know, bring other events to downtown, maybe whether it's concerts, maybe whether it's uh, fest, truck fest, monster fest, uh, WWE, uh, all of that good stuff. And, you know, a lot of people look at it and I look at it like this, man. You know, Taylor Swift, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, this is reckless speculation, but I'm pretty sure that Kelsey's is like, yo, let's do that concert thing in Cleveland. She like, no, <laughs> you got an open air dome. You have an open air, old, uh, decrepit stadium. We're not doing that right now. And, and my thing is not only build something there so you could do something more times during the year and year round, but also have some different places where you can have a carnival atmosphere. You can have the Disney world of, of the Cleveland Browns and, and you, and you walk through uh, a statue and ring of honors and all that good stuff and that good Wi-Fi and all the, you know what I'm saying? The mezzanines and we want all those things, man. You know? So when I look at it like this, people always talk about, Hey, well, the Browns want to use that uh, open that, that open field to their advantage. What advantage? When the last time you you saw a Cleveland Browns home game in the playoffs? I wait. It's like 1994, 95, man. 93. Like, we ain't, we ain't seen no championships like that. So all that outside, you know, I would love to get a home field play, playoff game. But at the end of the day, that hasn't had been a factor in what we're trying to do. So, you know, I'm with them. Um, you know, I think it sets up very well. I think people will get used to it. But the only problem is this. If you move it from downtown, from my standpoint, I think that you're going to have a lot of people um, that's going to hurt business wise. I think you may lose a lot of businesses. And I said this today on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. I, I work down there uh, every single, you know, tailgate, Browns tailgate on 92.3 The Fan. Uh, I worked down there doing a pregame show for six, seven years. And Every bar is packed. Every restaurant is packed. Every parking lot is packed. I paid $80 to just park, just parking, 80 So just think about how much that is and say, for instance, you got 20 some thousand people down there that's parking that didn't take the rail line, that didn't take public transportation, right? We look at people, we look at things like the Muni lot. I mean, a lot is a is a thing that 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 is a rite of passage. That is one of the things that we look at as Browns fans that we really want everywhere. Now, I'm, I'm granted there's probably a muni lot that we can drink in and have fun near Brook Park. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think it's a very tricky space because we've already had shrinking and you know you know shrinking numbers in Cleveland. Oh, in the 1970s, almost a million people were here. You know, now you're under 250, you know, maybe 300,000 people in inner city Cleveland. A lot of people in the suburbs. So how does that help or you know, hurt businesses? You know, when you don't have uh, that draw, those eight, nine, 10 weekends uh, a year. So it's, it's something that we all get into. We can all get into it. Let's get to some of your uh, thought processes and some of your uh, answers as well. Uh, going back to Kevin Stefanski a little bit, too. Um, Nicole D said Kevin's a good coach to be considered amongst the elite. He needs to start winning more playoff games and hopefully a Super Bowl. I think that's the thing that keeps him out of the top five. You know, when we look at those listed people that we named, all those guys have uh, had championships. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's that's something we got to ne- definitely get uh, definitely get going. 
Uh, JDaw66 says, we need to keep our stability going. I'm happy we don't have to revolving door like our history here in Cleveland. I think we read that already. Um, let's see. Um, uh, DeAndre Black says, we need to beat Pittsburgh or the Ravens twice tired of splitting. Hey, we, hey, it's a tough division, man. And I think it's going to even get, hey, get tougher, DeAndre. I think the Steelers got better. I think the Ravens took a little bit of a step back, but they were in first place to start with. So uh, it's, it's going to be a tough division. Rob Cunningham, shout out to Rob. What's up, man? Uh, G. Bush, I'm coming and hitting that like button. Let's go. Hit that like 113 in here. Make sure y'all hitting that like button too. Uh, Mike J said Watson needs to win either championship or MVP to have the same um, same respect or say uh, so for real. Um, I, I think, and I've said this before, Deshaun Watson, he'll probably, there, there's about 20% of the fan base um, that might not, you know, mess with Deshaun Watson. You know, there's probably about 15 of them that's going to be hard to reach. But for the rest of us, if he get them championships, I mean, you can sit in the corner and be upset, uh, but we're going to celebrate that thing. Um, let's see. Uh, Wasted Time says, um, Haslam's are not winners. They are losers. Um, they have hustled the Browns and will not win with these people. Well, there's one thing you can say about the Haslam's. They pay that check. There's a lot of people, hey amen, and people love the Guardians. One knock on the Guardians is Shane Bieber just went out there the other day and pitched a gym, right? But we already talking about how we going to move him. Already talking about Shane Bieber and what prospects we can get him. You say one thing about the Haslam's, you know, you may not like them as people. You may not agree with their business practices. But one thing I can say about the Haslam's, they got the bag and they are willing to renegotiate contracts and get it done. So I can't knock him on that. Last one before we go to the next break. Um, Mahomes uh, from Hot Texas has three Super Bowls and just played in the coldest game ever while playing at Kansas City Summit Weather. My boy Washington just got to adapt and play better. Well, look, hey, we we got to stop. We got to stop comparing anybody to Mahomes too. Uh, Mahomes is Mahomes. Like Mahomes done one in domes. He done one in Texas. He done one in Kansas City. He then came to Buffalo and the Ravens and it rained and snowed. And he still er, nobody is Patrick Mahomes. So we can't we can't just be throwing that name around like like it just like no it's it's different that that he's him like he he's done it in a lot of different ways. So all these quarterbacks that means Burrow that means Allen. Uh, Deshaun Watson, they already know what, what it is. You got to dethrone them. So everybody is in that 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 playbook. Everybody is in, in in that type of time. So let's get let's keep it moving. Uh, coming up next, we got the fan mail and your responses. Make sure if you want to get in di- uh, contact with the fan mail, uh, you can uh, definitely hit us up, and we'll let you know where to do that. That coming up here in a moment. You're listening to G Bush on the Ultimate Browns Show. Every Thursday, Ultimate 216, Earl the Pearl is on there. Uh, you know, he's talking about sports. He's talking about culture. He's talking about Cleveland. Make sure you check out Earl the Pearl, Ultimate 216, only right here on the UCSS Network. And it is time for fan mail questions and comments. As always, send your questions and comments by uh, calling the Ultimate Browns hotline below and leave a voicemail. Ultimate Browns hotline is 216-345-4433. Once again, Ultimate Browns hotline, 216-345-4433. And that is where these two callers hit us up at and, uh, you know, had us talking about some things. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. First call of the day. Let's get to it. Uh, this guy, uh, you know, he didn't leave his name or message. We appreciate you. Next time, call one. Let us know where you're naming you're calling from. He wants to talk about either building around Stefanski or Deshaun Watson. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like any organization pillars around the coach. For them, that, for them, that coach can bring in all the star players. And I don't and I don't think that an organization could be built around the quarterback. So that's my answer to the question. 
Love what you guys are doing at Ultimate Brown. Shout out to Caller One. We appreciate you. Uh, and he says, hey, look, um, I think you should build around the coach. The coach should bring in the players. And then um, from there, you have a program to, and stability to build around. For me, I disagree with that. I feel like, yes, you can have a coach, right? And, and, and this is a difficult situation. I'm not saying that, you know, this isn't something you would have to think about. But always remember, you know, when you take a look at the coach and the player, if you take away and you say you're a coach, and you are not calling the plays. You're just, you know, the CEO of the organization. When you don't have a quarterback, all things get real tricky and real tricky real fast. When you look at it, it get ugly quickly. Um, we've been there. Go back and look at all of the coaches that we've hired from Mangini all the way down to, to uh, you know, bringing in guys uh, uh, like, you know, it, the list goes on Mike Pettins of the world. And and, and and all these guys and didn't have any quarterbacks, you know, you know, Jackson, Hugh Jackson, no quarterback. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, when you don't have a quarterback and when you ain't got no like, you know, guy that you can hang your hat on and say, all right, well, we got we could figure out the rest of the roster around him. It gets real tough. And it always comes down to the chicken or the egg. Was it Bill Belichick or was it Tom Brady? Well, Tom Brady. Kind of went to pin. I uh, went down to Tampa Bay and got another ring. And Bill Belichick signed of the league. Not saying that Bill ain't one of the greatest, but Bill Bill don't throw the football. Bill don't you know have seven you know you know uh, fourth quarter comebacks. You don't have ten rings. Uh, so I would go for me. I'd go with the quarterback and then figure it out. Let's continue on caller number two, John Johnson. Is this the John Johnson? They used to play for the Browns. Let's see who this dude is on a voicemail. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey, G. Bush, what's up? This is Uncle John, a.k.a. John Johnson. Other than that, Rick James. Yeah, I'm an ultimate Cleveland Browns fan. Either way it goes, I'm listening to, to uh, Adam the Bull talking about where Nick Chubb's at. <laughs> Nick Chubb is in the back cave. That's all I've got to say. You He's in the back cage. Nobody knows anything. He's quiet. He's keeping quiet. He's going to bust out popping. I just want to know your opinion on that. We, 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 hold on, hold on. He said his name was Rick. Hey, Rick G-Bush, what's up? This is Uncle John, a.k.a. John Johnson. Other than that, Rick James. Yeah, I'm an ultimate Cleveland Browns fan. Either way it goes, I'm listening to, to uh, Adam the Bull talking about where Nick Chubb's at. Nick Chubb is in the back cave. That's all I really have to say. You understand. He's in the back cave. Nobody knows anything. He's quiet. He's keeping quiet. He's going to bust out popping. I just want to know your opinion on that. He says, yo, G. Bush, what's up? It's John Johnson, a.k.a. Rick James. <laughs> where, where Nick Chubb at? He's in the back cave. That's where he at. <laughs> Shout out to John Johnson, man. Give me a call any time, man. I don't think this is the John Johnson that uh, that went back to L.A. is playing safety for the uh, Chargers. Um, but, nah, man, I think Nick Chubb cool. He cooling. Nick Chubb ain't doing too much. I think Nick Chubb is, is like you said, he's in the back cave chilling. He's not going to say too much. I think Chubb will be ready. Um, I wouldn't even – listen, I put a red shirt on him the first four games. I don't even need Nick Chubb the first four. You know, you got Deontay Foreman. You got, uh, you know, saying you 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 got some guys that could come out here and help you out a little bit. Um, you got young guys in there. So to me, I, I I look for Nick Chubb to start playing after, um, you know, after the first four weeks. You know, let Jerome Ford handle some of them carries. Let Deontay Foreman handle some of them carries. And as long as we can get him uh, up and running and make sure he doing what he need to do for the first four. Nick Chubb is, is that guy. He'll be doing his thing. Let's get to some comments really quickly before we get up out of here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, DJ Lord Jazz says, Cavs need a win tonight. We sure do. Uh, Joe McConnell says, uh, press conference in Brazil next Wednesday to denounce it at James Porch. I, I see you, man. Uh, Lil Fred says, in my opinion, I'm a Browns fan from Kansas City, so I can't help but compare my um, QB to Mahomes. Let's not act like Washington and Mahomes wasn't 1A and 1B at one point. True facts. They was neck and neck a little bit. They was. Uh, people are saying the Browns will be in last place in AFC North. Y'all crazy there. They didn't lost their mind. Come on, man. Thank you, Plasma Void. Go ahead, LOL, and get him up out of here. You know, we're not doing that. Um, could have had D. Henry, but I wouldn't mind Derrick Henry. I mean, but 
you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is, man. And and Wood Dog MTG says, Jay Bush. All right, man. I want to appreciate everybody. 131 in here as we roll up out of here. Make sure you hit that like button. And as always, man, make sure you subscribe to the you know uh Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show channel. You get all these great. We give you basketball, we give you baseball, we give you football, and we give you football twice here with the Ultimate Brown. So with that being said, you never know when G. Bush is going to show up. The only thing I can give you and let you know what you possibly can do to catch him on the way out the door is listen for the Clippers. Have a great weekend and go Browns. 